Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's session on the New Testament Survey, BC 103. Today, we're going to study on the episodes of 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. So even before we could begin with our session, can I request uh, Sid, can you lead us in prayer? Father, we come to the throne of grace. Lord, thank you for this day you have given us, Lord. Lord, as we are going to learn from your scriptures, Lord, from your New Testament, Lord, the word, your living word, Lord, whatever we are going to learn, Lord, it should be less, not just the word, but Lord, it should minister us and it should be impactful in our daily life, Lord. Lord, thank you for this teacher. Thank you for all the students, Lord, as we are going to study about your word, Lord. Give us understanding so that we can understand and like do accordingly. Oh, Lord, help us and guide us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Um... Am I uh, this um, an audible <clears throat> or are you getting any background noise from my side? No, ma'am, you are audible. Okay, there's no background noise because there's some work going on outside. Um, I'm not too sure, is it noise or noise cancellation? Okay, the settings is fine. Okay, so there's no background noise, right? Yes, ma'am, your audio is clear. Okay, okay, thank you so much. Um, yes, we will begin with our session. We, uh, you all can turn to the book of John. 1 John. We're going to study on 1 John. Sid, um, you can uh, take the recording of yesterday's session. We studied on 1st and 2nd Peters. The recorded session is available on on the stream, okay, so that you don't miss on any other classes. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. So today we're going to study on the first epistle of John, first, second, and third John. We would be starting on. So in uh, in first John, we have about five chapters, and uh, Apostle John writes this letter around eighty-five. To between 85 to 95 AD. And he assures his readers that through Jesus, we have eternal life. And we can enjoy the fellowship with God and with fellow believers. And this letter is also circulated among the believers throughout the uh, Asia province, including the seven churches that has been mentioned in Revelation chapter 2 and 3. So, the highlight of this letter is the three characteristics of God. That God is light, and there is no darkness in him. And God is righteous, and everyone who participates in the righteousness is born of God. And he also says, as he's been an apostle of love, he also says, like, God is love. And he who does not love does not know God. And it also contains the best and the most concise definition, definition for worldliness. And there are some key verses in this book, like John chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. Can I request one of us to turn to John, 1 John chapter 1, verse 8 to 9? 1 John chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So what we see here is we see that God is faithful to forgive us, forgive us from all our Sins. And in chapter 2, verse 15 to 17, can, can the other person take up? 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 to 17. Another person, please turn to 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. And the next person, take up 1 John chapter 4, verse 18. First John chapter 2, verse 15 to 17. Do not love the world 
all the things in the world if anyone loves the world the love of the father is not in him for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not the father but it is of the world and the world is passing away and the lust of it but he who does does the will of god abides forever amen amen so what we see in this three scripture is john is encouraging us to not love the world or the things of the world or lust for the things that is in the world because the world is passing away and the lust of it but he who does the will of god abides forever he is encouraging us he is he's trying to take a focus from the worldliness and he is asking us to be focused on christ and be focused on the eternal life do not focus on the glory that is passing away but then focus on christ and we also see in um 1 john chapter 4 verse 4 you are of god little children have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world here john is saying that god is greater god is greater than anything in the world and hold on to him and in john chapter 4 verse 18 he says there is no fear in love but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment but he who fears has not been made perfect in love so you always see that john is uh he is bringing a point here saying that the perfect love casts out all fear when we have the love when we have god who's love and when he is with us with his help every fear that is uh, bothering us or that is affecting us will be cast it out and also he is giving us a promise in uh, 1 john chapter 5 verse 11 to 13 we see that god has given us eternal life and this is the promise that we can hold on to so this is what uh, john is encouraging us through the uh, first letter of john so with that we will go on to the background of this book so all of these letters were written by the same man same person that is apostle john even though he does not refer himself but then the language the style and the formation of the words and the universal acceptance by the early church fathers all suggest that possibly john was the author of this book so with that the first john deals with or uh, this book refers to the book of love first john is also referred as the book of love so john is often referred to as the disciple who jesus loved he is something uh, sometimes called the apostle of love it is primarily because of the book of first john that is given this title and love is used more in this little book than in any other book Bible. So, in this letter, in First John itself, uh, the word love is written over fifty times, and evidently John was concerned about um, the lack of true Christian love among the body of believers. So, he is trying to emphasize and build each believer in the love of. Christ and we also see John has been concerned about the uh, rising heresy of gnosticism and its effect on the church on the church believers and he was very uh, particularly concerned about the branch of gnosticism that believe Jesus did not have a physical body they had a question on his deity they denied the dual nature of Christ being a deity and is a human at the same time well they view was christ seem to have just a body so it is a different kind of body and this teaching was trying to spread among the believers in the churches by these 
false teachers. So what we see here is just like the um, other apostles like Paul, Peter, here we see John is also concerned about these false teachers who are causing a lot of trouble to him in the church. So he is trying to uh, sternly instruct the believers and um, and share the truth to bring them to the knowledge of the gospel. And yeah, so what did this Gnosticism believe in? What was their teaching? They believed that all matter was evil. They also believed that the spirit was good. And uh, they believed in order that Jesus was fully good, but he could not have been a partaker of flesh and blood. So they believe that uh, Jesus Christ did not literally die on the cross. He only, he only appeared to do so. So the teaching was completely not realistic. And, uh, you know, they were trying to spread this type of wrong teaching into the churches. They were slowly creeping in. So John was also writing uh, to encourage the saints, the believers in the church. He gives um, seven reasons of his own so what is that seven reason? We see that in John chapter 1 verse 3 where he says that uh, that they might have fellowship with him. Fellowship with him. And their joy might be full. In four. And we also see in chapter 2 verse 1 we see that uh, my little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. So what we see, the third point here, John is making is that they might not sin. And in the uh, same chapter, verse 12 to 14, John is encouraging the, uh, uh, the, the believers saying that they might be instructed. And uh, same chapter 2, verse 26, he says that they might not be deceived be very careful don't be deceived with these false teaching and in chapter 5 and we turn to chapter 5 verse 13 he talks about um, um, he says these things have returned to you believe in the name of the son of god that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may continue to believe in the name of the son of so what we see here is assuring that we have eternal life. And he also continues to say, believe in Jesus, believe that he is the son of God, believe in him. So he is emphasizing on Jesus who has been the son of God. And when we believe on him, we have been assured of the eternal life. So these are the seven things that John is encouraging the believers, the saints in the church and also with this we will move on to second john so yeah yeah second john is one chapter so in second john we see that uh, this uh, chapter is all about truth it is called as the book of truth so the focus of this book is that having love for the truth and walking in True. So the second John is uh, only the New Testament book specifically addressed to a woman to whom John is writing. Uh, he is mentioning as uh, in chapter 1 verse 1, he says to the elect lady and her children whom I love in truth and not only I but all but also all those who, who have known the truth. We also see, uh, like, you know, some of the interpreters say that uh, this is just a, a personification of the universal church uh, and uh, where the children, um, here it says all believers, it has been addressed to all the believers as the children. But then, in general, the scholars believe that, no, there is a woman who was in leadership in the church in Babylon. So now when we say Babylon, do we know which place is Babylon? We discussed it in yesterday's class. It's Rome. So in 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 13, we read 
think I'm a big first Peter. Chapter 5, verse 13, we read that. She who is Babylon, elect together with you, greets you, and so does Mark, my son. Okay, so this is actually addressed to a leader who was in leadership in the church in Rome. Babylon is nothing but Rome. In those days, uh, that was the code or symbol that they used for Rome. So she, is, she seemed to be a well-known lady in the church who was loved by all, including Apostle John. So this is the most common view by all the scholars that the personal nature of the greeting at the end of this book seemed to lean toward it being addressed to an actual friend of John and she was a woman. Uh, where, verse 13, we see that the children of your elect sister greet you. So what we see is in verse 4 in this letter, verse 4, where it says, I rejoice. Uh, I think somebody's microphone is on. Okay. Okay. So what we see here is uh, in verse 4, Second, uh, uh, Second John, verse four. We say we see that I rejoice greatly that I found some of your children walking in truth as we received commandment from Father. So what we see here, that believing children obedient to the truth. And can I request one of us to uh, read verse ten from this letter? Verse 10, 11, and 13. 2 John chapter 1, verses 10. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, do not take him into your hands or welcome him. Anyone who welcomes him shares in the wicked work. I have much to write to you, but I do not want to use paper and ink. Instead, I hope to visit you and talk to you face to face so that our joy may be complete. The children of your chosen sister and send their greetings. Thank you. So what we see here is uh, the, the letter that is addressed as elect lady is a person, she is a woman who had believing children who were obedient to the truth. And she has used her home for the congregation's gathering. We also see that uh, she was known for a tremendous spirit of hospitality in verse 10 to 11. We see that. And in verse 13, we see that she had sister, had a sister, niece, nephews, who were friends of John. Uh, so, the very purpose of this letter is uh, John addresses similar concerns to that of the first letter of John, but on a more personal basis. So, uh, we see that he wanted to warn a woman who was noted for receiving itinerant minister to be on the lookout for the false teachers and they might try to infiltrate her home. So he was a little concerned about that, not little, much concerned about that. Yeah. With that, we can move on to the third letter of John. So in third letter, we see that uh, even this book, even this letter is known to be as the book of truth. But with more emphasis on the practical side of walking in truth, rather than the doctrinal side of protecting the truth from the errors, as uh, as we saw in the second John. So it is the shortest book in the New Testament. Yeah. So um, the third John is written to a man by the name of Gaius. Now, who is Gaius? Have we heard his name any time before? Any other letter, any other book, have you heard his name? Have you heard his name in the book of Acts or in any of Paul's letter? Yeah. 
Yes. Uh, we have come across this name in the book of Acts when we turn to cha Acts chapter 19, verse 29. We see that uh, there were several men uh, uh, in, in the book of New Testament when we read uh, different books like book of Acts or, uh, uh, or any of the letters of Paul, uh, especially the book of Ro the letter to Romans or the letter to Corinthian church, we come across this person by the name Gaius. So one man, um, which has been addressed in the book of Acts chapter 19 verse 29 is uh, a man from Macedonia who traveled with Paul. And also in Acts 20, we see another man from Derby who traveled with and in the book of Corinthians, chapter 1, verse 14, we also see um, he was a third man who was resident of the church at Corinth. And he was also baptized by Paul and hosted Paul when he wrote the book of Romans. Now, because the Gaius of the third John was a convert of John, he most likely is none of the three mentioned about who, who was already related with Paul. So this John, who, uh, sorry, this Gaius whom John is addressing in the third letter is a Gaius who is different from the, the three Gaius who were, uh, who were in touch with Paul. So this person may have been converted by John and he, he would have been a respected leader in the church. So when we read 3rd John chapter 1 verse 1, we see that the elder to the beloved Gaius whom I love in truth. So he seemed to be a very respected leader in the church and uh, verse 3 says that he was a man who warmed out his faith. And we also see from verse 5 to 8, John is addressing him and he was well noted for his hospitality. So that's what he says. He says, Beloved, you do faithfully whatever you do for the brethren and for strangers who have borne witness of your love before the church. So if you send them forward on their journey in a manner worthy of God, you will do well. Because they went forth for his name's sake, taking nothing from the Gentiles. We therefore ought to receive such that we may become fellow workers for the truth. So this is what he's been noted for. And the very purpose for, the, uh, for this letter was to commend Gaius for his attitude of hospitality and also to express the concern over Diotrephus who seemed to be rejecting the apostolic road into the life of church. He also, uh, it, it appears that Diotrephus was openly rejecting the leaders, the ministry leaders who were itinerant uh, or who were visiting the churches there, uh, uh, churches there, and they were particularly carrying the letter of John and visiting them. So, what is, uh, so the date of writing this letter is again approximately from 85 to 90 AD, where this letter seems to have written from Ephesus prior to John's exile on Patmos. And the other two epistles were more personal in nature and they were never circulated to the extent of the first letter was. And With that, let's move on to the unique features of this book, all three books. So the first John, the unique features of first letter, first John is John's refutation towards the Gnostic heresy. So here we see that Jesus Christ was true man with flesh and blood. So John saw and heard Jesus personally with his own eyes and ears. He was a personal, personal eyewitness to Jesus. And he also says in uh, 1 John chapter 1, he says, um, actually, I touched him. I handled Jesus. I was with him. I, uh, you know, he, 
he gives that uh, emotion, the physical expression of him being with Jesus. And we also see that G and he's also confirming that Jesus had flesh and blood. Jesus has uh, received and having true flesh, just like us, he was a man. You know, he's trying to explain it to come against the Gnostic heresy. And he also depicts Christ in chapter uh, in uh, in first John uh, from chapter one and two. He tries to depict so he says, Jesus was indeed the Son of God when he defended the human nature of Christ. And now he is saying he is also 100% God. When he was 100% man, he is also 100% God. And here he says, Jesus was the Son of God and he is our advocate with the Father. And he also says in uh, John, uh, 1 John, if it turns 1 John chapter 2, verse 2, he says, and he himself is the propitiation for our sins, and not for us only, but also for the whole world. Now, what is this word propitiation? Anyone in the class? Anyone? Okay. Propitiation is nothing but the mercy seat. Jesus became our mercy seat. Can we also turn to Hebrews chapter 9 verse 5? Anyone? Hebrews chapter 9 verse 5. We also see Paul addressing the sin. Not Paul, sorry. The writer of Hebrews. And above it where the cherubim of glory overshadowing. Can uh, if you all have different version other than NKJV, I would encourage you to read from that, please. Ma'am, I am having an IV. Yes, please. Hebrews, Hebrews chapter nine, verses five. Above the ark were the cherubims of glory, overshadowing the atonement cover. But we cannot discuss these things in detail now. So what we see in different version is, it says, the power where the cherubim of glory overshadowing the mercy seat, the propitiation, okay? Uh, <clears throat> for our sin and not for ours only, but also for the whole world. So Jesus was our mercy seat for our sin. And we also see in chapter 2, verse 20, John is depicting Christ as the Holy One. Jesus is the Holy One. And in verse 22, he says, Jesus is the Christ. Jesus is the Christ. So what are the five points that he depicts Christ as in the letter of this John? First, as the Son of God. Second, that Jesus is an advocate with the Father. Third, Jesus as a mercy seat for our sins. Fourth, this is the Holy One. Fifth, Jesus is the Christ. So with that, now he also goes further and he depicts someone who is born of God. That is, the saints, the believers who believe in Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. Now, he is depicting them again in five ways. In chapter 2, 3, 4, and 5, we see that. We see that in chapter 2, verse 5. Can I request one of us to please read? One John, chapter 2, verse 5.
First John chapter two and verses nine. Anyone verse who claims to be verse five, verse five. Ma'am, chapter First John chapter second verses five. Yes. Okay, ma'am. But if anyone obeys his word, God's love is truly made complete in him. This is how we know we are in him. Right. Thank you. So what we see here, if there's anyone who keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. By this we know that we are in him. So what is that? We need to keep, they keep his word. The one who believes Jesus as our Lord and Savior are the saints who keeps his word. And the second point he says, can I request one of you to turn to chapter 2, verse 29. And the other person turn to chapter 3, verse 9. 4, chapter 4, verse 7. And then last, chapter 5, verse 1. So if you're ready with chapter 2, verse 29, can we read? I'll read. Uh, yes. 1 John chapter 2, verse 29. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who practices righteousness is born of him. Amen. So what is important here? The key point here is, if you know that he is righteous, then everyone who practices righteousness is born of him. So if we are in Christ, if we are the child, the saint of God, then we will practice righteousness in our life. So it, uh, this character, the bodily character, will be embedded within us. As the follower of Christ, we will, uh, we will try to practice righteousness in our life. So whenever we do something wrong, we will immediately correct ourselves. Correct ourselves and try to do what is right, what is pleasing to God. So we try to practice righteousness. Okay. And if you are ready with chapter 3, verse 9, please read. Chapter 3, verse 9. I'll read. First uh, John chapter 3, verse 9. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin beca because he has been born of God. Yes. So whoever has been born of God does not sin. So what happens here? As a saying, we do not uh, encourage ourselves to sin. We do not continue in sin. And also chapter 4 verse 7 says, Beloved, let us love one another for love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. So as saying, they love God and other people. Because it is one of the commandments from Jesus, love your neighbor as you love yourself. And also in chapter 5 verse 1, it says, whoever believes in Jesus is the Christ, is born of God. And everyone who loves him, who begot, also loves him, who is begotten of him. So they believe that Jesus is the Christ. So the five points that John is de depicting of someone who is born of God will have this five traits in them or five characteristics in them. What is that? First, they will keep his word. Second, they will practice righteousness. Third, they do not continue in sin. Fourth, they, they love God and others. And fifth, they believe that Jesus is Christ. And sixth is they overcome the world. When they believe Jesus, they overcome the world. We see that chapter 5 verse 4, it says... For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. 
and also in the same chapter i am just reading it for the time okay verse 18 he says we know that whoever is born of god does not sin but he who has been born of god keeps himself and the wicked one does not touch it so what we see here we see that the god himself from the evil the god himself from the evil would be the seven so with that we will see how john compares god's love and our love we see that in john chapter 1 verse can i request one of us to turn to chapter uh, john chapter 1 sorry john 1 john chapter 4 verse 11 and 16 1 john chapter 4 verse 11 and 16 verse 11 dear friends since god so loved us we also ought to love one another and verse 16 and so we know and we rely on the love god has for us okay the version is little different i will read it from m king jv uh, yeah beloved of god so loved us we also ought to love one another and in 16 he says and we have known and believed the love that god has for us that god is love and he who abides in love abides in god and god in him so what we see that god's love for man is manifested in in the way like he sent his son into the world and we see that the son laid down his life for us we see that he, he had given up given up the spirit for us and he was called and uh, and he called us as his children through one and then we see our love for god is manifested like how in chapter 2 verse 3 to 5 One John chapter two verse three to five. Can I request one of us to please read? Brother Subir, please read it. Nama. Brother Lobega, is it possible that you all can turn to chapter one John chapter chapter three verse twenty three? One John chapter three verse twenty three. Let's look. Let me read one John chapter three, verse twenty three. Yes. It says, "And this is His commandment, that we should believe on the name of His Son Jesus Christ and love one another as He gave us commandment." Amen. Amen. So what we see here, our love for God is manifested in that we keep His commandment, and also in uh, in John chapter five, we see that love is only begotten Son. We also see in chapter two that love our brother and sister, and John is encouraging us: do not love the world or the things of the world. because they are tempted he's asking us to lay uh, keep our uh, mind focused on the eternal things and in john chapter 3 verse 16 he says by this we know love because he laid down his life for us and we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren so you will see john is encouraging each of us to lay our lives down for one another and the following verse uh, 17 and 18 where he, he says that share your possession with your brother and sister who are in need is encouraging us to be generous like how uh, even jesus were teaching when uh, uh, we read that in the gospel of matthew where it says it's more blessed to give than to receive so verse 18 says that love love not 
love goes not in your words, but also in your action. It should not just be a word in our mouth or in our tongue, but it should be in our deed, in our action and in truth. So with that, we will move on uh, to the Third John, we see that uh, where uh, John is explaining, uh, giving us an insight into the itinerant ministers, the traveling ministry leaders. So what happened here is we see the Apostle John raises some of the leaders and he sends a letter in their hand on behalf of him. So they could travel from church to church with the letter from the Apostle John and bring a word of encouragement to the congregation. So what happened? This was a great service to the church and it helped to keep them in touch with the greater body of church. So what happened? As these traveling ministers depended greatly on the deal of hospitality of the church leaders or the church believers. So what happened uh, where uh, the church leaders or the believers, members, could provide them for their travel and, for, and meet the need during their travel. So we see that John uh, addresses in the, uh, the third John, uh, he addresses how this person named Gaius has been known for his hospitality towards this um, towards this traveling itinerant minister, minister, where he says Diotrephus. But then there was a person called Diotrephus who was on the opposite spectrum, on the opposite side. He was totally against these traveling ministry leaders where John evidently had sent a letter to the church and this person, Diotrephus, did not allow these traveling ministry leaders to read the letter. Eventually, what happened? Diotrephus was so against this ministry that he persecuted those who opened their house towards these traveling ministers. So John, uh, John's commendation for the hospitality towards the leaders and uh, towards Gaius who opened up their house to these traveling ministry leaders. We see that in 3rd John, verse 5 to 6, we see that, Beloved, you do faithfully whatever you do for the brethren and for strangers. Verse 6, he says, Who have borne witness of your love, before the church, if you send them forward on their journey in a manner worthy of God, you will do well. Something very nice. He is encouraging the believers, the saints of the church to bless or treat well these traveling ministry leaders. And whatever you do unto them, is like you are doing unto God. There are two ways, two interpretations to the scripture we can say. One, we can say like you treat people the way you would treat God himself. And the second way uh, we can interpret the scripture as um, maybe uh, we can treat these people the way God himself will treat them. We need to see the minister of God as the servant of God as uh, you know, like how we treat God. So we need to treat people the way God treats us. We need to treat people as how we can treat God himself. These are the two perspective interpretation. We can take this uh, word of encouragement from John and John uh, three men were in contrast, like how we studied about Gaius who opened up his house and he had received these leaders and uh, he was known for his good hospitality. And there's also another person in this letter where we see Demetrius. Uh, he had a good testimony from Paul and he led a good life uh, in relation to the truth. At the same time, we see Diotrephus who was totally opposite. Um, 
he, he was uh, very rude, he was malicious and running other ministries down. He refused to receive other ministry uh, leaders and he forbid others to receive them and punish them if they do and uh, did evil in relationship with the church. So, and also what was our learning from these three letters? What was our learning from these three letters? Or what was the message that we get from all these three letters? So we see in um, checking, yeah. So in First John, you see the main message of First John is that love is the glue that binds the universe together. Yes, it begins with God who is love, demonstrating his love for us in action by giving his only begotten son to die for us. And we also see that John explains that love is extended when we reciprocate God's love. And in turn, love our neighbor as us. And in 2 John, in 2 John, we see that the main message of this book is that, is that loving truth, abiding in truth, walking in truth will keep us from being deceived by any false teaching or any false doctrine that arises. So hold on to the truth of gospel. And the third letter, the main message of the third uh, letter of John is that we need to verify our love for the truth. How? By action. In, a, uh, in treating our ministry leaders or being very hospitable towards the same, maintaining openness and imitating the love of God uh, as a good nature in us and being uh, try to be a blessing to give to the church, to the ministry leaders. Uh, because they depend on us. So here we see John encouraging us to be a blessing to the ministry leaders who serve God, who is carrying his message, who are traveling from one place to the other to spread the word, spread the gospel. So here we see John is encouraging not only the church there, but each of us to be a blessing towards the ministry, towards the church, towards the pastors, towards the ministry leaders who are carrying the gospel from a place to the other. Open up our doors when they are visiting our place. Uh, host them at your home. Uh, make sure that uh, uh, we meet, they meet, uh, give, uh, bless something that they uh, they don't run shortage in their travel. So, uh, you know, overall, he's asking us to be a channel of blessing. And he's encouraging us, do it as though you do it and to God, not unto any man. And uh, we also see it will be all well. He's just encouraging, as the Gospel Matthew says, it is a blessing to give than to receive. So he's saying, when you give, you receive the blessing from God. All will be well with you. So this is the message that we get from all these three letters. And now I open it to the class. Is there anything that you would like to share? And um, we can go ahead before we could dismiss ourselves with a word of prayer. Anyone? You would like, yes, yes, please go ahead. Ma'am, when I listen, like when I see the name of the book, like John 1, John 2, John 3, so suddenly a question raises in my mind. Like there are so, so small chapters, like if we see like John 2nd and John 3, 3, there are only 1 1 chapters. So then like what was the reason like he wrote, like Apostle John wrote specific like different books. Why didn't he just compile it in one like John? Why there are like three different epistles like this? Okay, so because of his writing in different period and uh, different period, so they have to preserve it that way. They cannot combine all the letters which was written in different season 
with the different intention or the purpose. Or anyone else would like to add on to uh, uh, Sid's question? Anita, Leah Lama, Aradhana, Rabbi, is there anything that you, blessing, anything that you would like to share? Or what is your thoughts, Sid? Why do you think that John uh, letter is not combined as one single letter and why they have made it separate? What do you think, Sid? Ma'am, I was just thinking about like I agree with your I agree with your answer, like because of the timeline difference and the set of people he was ministering to. Yes, you see, uh, the first letter was addressed to the church. Okay, it is also referred as the book of love and it is referred to the churches and this first letter was circulated to different churches. It was written in a different timeline and this letter was circulated. But if you see the second letter, to whom was it addressed to? Woman. Yes, it was addressed to a family of women who had children, an elect women who had children. Okay. So that letter cannot be combined with the first letter because this letter would have sent to that uh, after uh, many, I, I, I'm not too sure like after many years, after many years it was written and it was sent to the particular church where she was the leader. Okay, And the third letter was sent uh, to encourage the church that opened up the ho uh, a house uh, to host the ministry, the travel either the traveling ministry leaders like he encouraged Gaius for his hospitality at the same time he, he condemned he, he brought a correction to Demetrius of the act that he was doing the way he was against these traveling ministry leaders and um, you know sorry not Demetrius Dio Trifus, um, like how rude he behaved against these leaders and he encouraged the church members not to do something like that. Okay, he said uh, don't do such evil things to the uh, traveling ministry leaders. In fact, we need to love them. We need to uh, be a good example by hosting them. Okay, we need to do good work. So these three letters were written for three different purposes and for three different churches. You got it? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so that's why we cannot combine them together as one single letter. And they have addressed it three separately and each one have their own purpose or themes. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of things for us to learn from these three different letters. Though the author is the same, but he has written and addressed to three different. Okay. Did that answer your question, Sid? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, yes. Thank you. So, can uh, we this? Uh, can you pray and dismiss us? Father, we come to the throne of grace. Lord, thank you for the day, Lord. As we have learned about book, book John one, John two, and John three, Lord. Whatever the commandments, the blessing, the Lord, whatever the the codes are there, Lord. As we have to follow, as the third should grow, as the woman, as for the Lord, we have to host the ministry, the ministry in our house, Lord. Lord, we are your vessels, Lord. We should be used in a mightly way, Lord. Lord, use us and make us in whatever the way it suits you, Lord. Not our will, but Lord, your will be done, Lord. Lord, thank you for this hour, what we have spent in your presence, Lord. Whatever the learning we have got, Lord, it should not be wasted, but it should be used for the ex effective ministry and your kingdom expansion. In the name of Jesus, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the God's people say, Amen. 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 Thank you so much uh, for joining in today's session. Have a great day. God bless you. See you all next time. Thank you.